Hi there, this is Deb Shaw. I am recording a quick little bite of information to give you the scoop on this interview I did with Sandy. Uh, last week, I was excited to chat with Sandy, who is in Philly, which is fun because I'm in Pennsylvania as well, in central Pennsylvania. And she and I talked about a lot of different things, but I'll say, First of all, why you want to listen to this uh, interview is because we talked about trusting yourself and how that can make a difference in your business. We talked about online community building, how to bring people together. Um, we talked about business development of like social media. There's so many platforms. Where am I supposed to post? How am I supposed to do that? Um, where should I be? What should I be doing in 2024? We talked about a couple of those things and we talked about the the way you can develop your own content, um, not by just randomly posting content, but by understanding your members better. And so in this interview, Sandy and I talk a lot about discovering um, the superpowers that you have, how to utilize them, and then put that into action. So I hope you enjoy this interview and I'll be back with you soon to chat with you about some more community building, I hope you're finding some calm today. I'm excited about 2024 and there's some really great updates that are gonna be coming. I will share with you more soon. So stay tuned, take care, bye. Okay, my hey, I got something to say people. It's a brand new year. And what have I told you about brand new years? I want you to go big. I want you to take risks. It doesn't always work out. There I was on Facebook going, where are you, Deb? Where are you? And then she wasn't coming on. I'm not going to say, but it may or may not be in me. <laughs> I think I wasn't set up right, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. So let's welcome Deb. Yay, Deb. Hey there. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. Since 2020, as a community strategist, <laughs> Deb Shell helped more than 60 entrepreneurs find calm. Now I get it in building, <laughs> launching, and growing an online community. Well, there you have it, folks. As host of the Community Strategy Podcast, Deb has interviewed over 100 business and community leaders to learn firsthand what strategies work for online community builders. Creator to community builder, I like this. Find Calm While Building an Online Community is Deb's first book. Woo, 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 I love it. Which shares how to develop and build an online community with new community builders. Deb, you're the bomb, man. I love that. I, I felt calm, even though, like, I don't really care. I'll try anything if it works or not, but most of my guests aren't like you. And you're like, yeah. So let's talk about this. One line, trust yourself. You know more than you think. Do I, Deb? Do I? Remember? You do. You do. <laughs> it might not be about Zoom and Facebook today. Color. Huh. But after today, it yeah. will be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. So I want to get into the biggest question. When I told people you were coming on, I got asked over and over again because about this one line trust yourself you know more than you think yeah and so many women they were jokingly but they were saying are you sure because i've screwed up a lot of times and <laughs> most of them it had not that this is our topic but it was more about their relationships mm -hmm. You know, and that they trusted theirself and you know it went awry. So I'm I'm thinking maybe it might be easier in the community building, but I don't know. So what do you have to ask Deb? Are you really sure? Because I've made a lot of poor choices <laughs> trusting myself when it comes to dating. Oh, yeah, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still single and probably gonna be that way for a while. <laughs> I don't That's know. Another podcast. We or... don't know what the future is going to hold. Yeah, it could meet our person tomorrow, um, or today. the The thing that I want to say is, this is what I'm exactly working on this year. Is my my word for the year is curiosity, being curious. Ooh. And the thing that I think most about my experiences, and I'm not super old. I'm not super young. I'm kind of in that middle you know, crazy time when 
people do crazy things like 40s is what they're made for, I guess. I feel like 40s is made for like doing whatever you want. Oh. You're finally like away from that. Now, kids, younger people, may, may, maybe not, but for people yeah. who are my age or older or around my age or whatever, just yeah. saying, I think we thought we were following a script most of our life. This is what we do. We go to work. We do this. We pay our bills. Eventually, we'll get a raise. Eventually, we'll get to some place. And when I realized this past year in 2023 that that is not the case, <laughs> like things don't work the way we can plank a plan, but that's not the way they work. Mm -hmm. So I really dived into this trusting myself that I can do this because I can, because I know it. I've done it before. I've seen okay. challenges. We've overcome things. You've overcome things. The person who's asking that question I'm sure they could give you lessons of all of the things that they've learned. So they're approaching the next thing with fresh eyes mm. because they've gotten some perspective somehow. Sometimes we don't take a pause and we keep going right yeah. to the next thing. And I think that's the challenge of finding that pause that, that allows us to sit and think mindfully and intentionally about the next thing, about the next step, whatever that is. So I have two questions in there, but let's stay with the trusting yourself. Yeah. And, and I do like this because I do think we forget. I forget all the stuff I've accomplished and that have gone well until somebody has me, which is rare, but I'm, I guess on somebody else's podcast and they start reading my biography and I go, damn girl, like, you know what I mean? I did all that. And then it makes me reflect on, because right now I'm, I'm in the process of building another new business. I sold my other one. And whenever I get that fear, you know, in my tummy and scared, I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've done this before. And everybody doubted me. I've hit stumbling blocks before. Yeah. So you're right. The reminders of looking, and sometimes we forget to pause and reflect about all that we have accomplished. Yeah. And I, I had a coach tell me once. Everything had to, has to have happened at the exact way it happened for you and I, Sandy, to be talking here today. So True. had I made different decisions, had you made different decisions, had our lives been different, we may or may not have ever crossed cross path. I think that's hard yeah. sometimes too, especially when it's not fun things yeah. or not joyful things like traumatic uh, situations like I've went through, and I'm sure a lot of other people listening have gone through serious challenges and it's hard yeah, to be present. And especially when you're not happy with your present, like where you are in your life. And that can be a challenge too. But I think there's always a way to reset and to be like you just said, yep. I already did this somehow. I did this in one different kind of area. Yeah. I, I can try it in this area. Yeah. Yeah. I always um, tell my clients, you have three main areas, right? You know, body health, love relationships, money career. I mean, you can break it down in any yeah. of those. There's usually one that's like, mm, and build on the other ones that you do have down or that one area. Cause there's always one area that's the bomb for you, right? Like if you, there is, to have you yeah, found it? I have. <laughs> well, if I were, let's, let's back up Deb. In my world, the Sandy world, I, I think they're all going well. They just don't go as well sometimes as others. So I've always been able to, even if it's just a teeny, teeny, teeny glimpse to be able to see, all right, this is, this is where I want to go, even if I'm in the thick of it, you know? Yeah. which I think is my, you know, you have your superpower. Everyone yeah. has a superpower. I think that's my superpower to go. Well, I can see this tiny glimpse of hope over there, but let's just say yeah. you have one area that. I discovered example, just so you're, just so you're saying, I discovered that my recently in the last three years, that my superpower is helping people find calm. I had a business logo and a name before in 2019 before I even figured all of this other stuff out and I think it all came to fruition because it is what I help people with 
in yeah. a lot of different ways in relationship conversations and business conversations and tech conversations. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just, it is now I haven't really, I'm still working on that monetization piece. <laughs> Like a lot of other people, I found some things that worked and I'm working on building up on making those things better. Yeah. But it took me this, this like 20 years of time hmm. to understand, oh, dad, when you were 20, you thought you were going to be a photojournalist and travel all over the world as a newspaper reporter. And then newspapers, what are they? We don't know. what. They <laughs> and, and cameras. Oh, everybody's got one on their phone right now and video cameras. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't need to hire any professionals. So my whole world changed and mm -hmm. I had to figure out something else. So I think that the one big thing that I've learned, if I could sum it up to one thing, is not too much identification in one area. Ooh, and I, I found that, that, that be, for example, I had put my identity when I was in my 20s as a journalist. And then when I got fired at my journalism job, mm -hmm. I was like, what am I doing now? Who's going to hire me? How am I, what am I like, who is Deb if she's not this? Yeah. And doing all that reflective work, I changed my identity again. I became somebody who does uh, artwork sale. So I started selling my artwork to my photography, to corporate businesses. Like, and then I became a salesperson and then I, you know, so I've changed and had several different careers and I'm 43. I'm not young, but I'm not old. Yeah. That's because I get bored a lot, <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> but well, it's just know, interesting to not attach to those things and to not be attached to this Deb, to this version of Deb. Yeah. I like that because I've always felt that way. Like, uh, here's my mission. My mission has been simple. Spread joy. But I've said my vehicle has changed on how I do it. Mm -hmm. It could be this. So if you are, which I can attest to how you were, because trust me, there have been a lot of people I'm reading through this who would have flipped out when that was going on. And you were like, oh, okay. I got the Zoom link. Oh, here, we're going to do it on Facebook. I'm like, oh, and you just gave me one of my bucket lists. I've always wanted to stream and just be chit chat and talk about, wait a minute, I got to go feed the dog. Like I've been, I've, I've been thinking this is good. Like they're all yeah. young people do it, but I want to stream and like, you know, yeah. they play games and they're just, all right. So I know my nephew is really into, he was into the marble, marble world. Like just watching these people play marble games and like making things with marbles. Yeah. I was like, I'd rather just be making the marble things <laughs> on the platform, like on the app or whatever it is on the game. But he loves watching it, so okay. But he's now over that phase. That was like a phase, and now he's over it. He's five, so yeah, no good enough. <laughs> well, now I am into watching people that I don't watch the news, but I like when I watch streamers who I believe in the same mindset who show me clippings, and then we talk about it. Well, we I'm not talking about it, but you know I think that's really cool, and yeah. I love their style, of just hanging out. All right, so Deb. Because this is a big one, and I get all the stuff you've done, I'm looking at the reoccurring theme of the questions here. And when they came in, yeah, about trusting yourself, but then community strategist. Mm -hmm. And that is so important to everyone. And I don't know, Deb, it, it, it became a real big question where people are really getting sad that they don't have that down. They're really sad because mm -hmm. here they are, maybe not technically savvy. I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone, but they also don't want to look like a fool on social media. And yet they know they need to build their community, especially for their business. I mean, there's just no way around it nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And yet it doesn't yes. represent their company. I think that you have, you make choices as a business owner um, on where your business customers are, where your customers or clients are. Yeah. And you choose, but that's how I... You know, when, when you talk about strategizing, that's what I learned that I was really good at 
anyone can set to, can tell you how to set up a Facebook group, for example. You can learn that on videos. I'm sure there's 17 YouTube videos on like tips for a Facebook group, for example. Yeah. yeah. But what you can't get from a video is understanding your members and what they're going to do and what you think they're going to do and then what they actually do. <laughs> because humans are unpredictable. Yes, we are. Absolutely unpredictable, which is wonderful and annoying and all of the things, right? I've had so many conversations with clients about, I want them to do this, and then I want them to do this. And I said, great, but we can't make anyone do anything. Yeah. So what is going to invite them to come into this community or come into this conversation? And what's in it for them? So we have to constantly, I, I recommend thinking of it as what's in it for them and also what's in it for the business owner. So it can be a mutually beneficial. When I talk about ecosystems in my book, I talk about this idea of you are a teacher as well as I'm a teacher, as well as I'm a learner and you're a learner hmm. and you just have a different tools in your toolbox. Yeah. Yeah. And I have different tools in my toolbox. You might be farther along on the, on the game of life or whatever, like different spaces. You've had maybe better relationships than I have. <laughs> well, Certainly, you know, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> I'm sure that anybody has had a better relationship than I have in my life, personal relationships, but. That's not true, but go ahead. I know it's not true. I can't say that it's not true. But anyway, yeah, I don't know ahead. what I was saying now. Chit chatting about what are we talking about? Strategy. Strategy. <laughs> community and decide. I love this is my favorite one. And the, the, you, um, you can't predict where your people are going to be. You can't, yeah. predict, you know, you want them to do this and then you want them to do that. And then you want them to do that. And wouldn't that be lovely? Right. It would be great because humans don't work like that. So then that means that instead of me sitting in my house, for example, trying to think about all this stuff by myself, okay. I can reach out to somebody like me that can help you. And a lot of the work I do is just validating other people's ideas or picking them apart to see where the missing spots are or mm. what's missing here. Because a lot of people think they have great ideas and then we have to validate it somehow. Like what problem is this business solving? Because businesses are in business to solve a problem typically in some way, shape or form. We have to first identify if a community is the solution to the problem. So if I, I was talking with somebody earlier on a podcast episode about this, it's a good example. I thought, um, I, let's say I have a hard time brushing my teeth twice a day. Mm -hmm. Now, if I have cavities, I'm not going to go to your house to get them fixed. I'm going to go to a dentist. Okay. So the cavity solution is to go to the dentist and get cavities filled. Now, the habit solution with a community is let's Deb practice healthy habits. A community could help you remind you to, to brush twice a day, and it could help you to remember certain other things about dental care. <laughs> you know, you could have a whole community that talk of, talks about dental care. Now, none of those people are going to literally go in your mouth <laughs> and adjust things, right? Because that's what professionals are for. So that's what I, I kind of I give I an example of. Which is so weird because I have a new dentist appointment tonight <laughs> for the first time. Woo, another first. Another first. Okay. So I did follow that. I, I, I got yeah. that. Yeah. The, it's the same thing, you know, with working out. Your community is going to support you and say, you know, what did you do today? Whatever. But they're not actually going to the gym. A lot of them are not actually the trainers. Yeah. yeah. You can't, not... yeah, you can't make somebody do something, but you can inspire them and encourage them and cheer them yeah. and, and let them be heard when they're struggling mm. without giving an answer. All, this is the one thing I've really learned <laughs> a lot. And I still struggle with it is listening without fixing it. Oof. And, and just what's the challenge? No I just want to talk. <laughs> what's the challenge? I'll hear you. Do you want any feedback? What can I do to support you? 
those kinds of conversations are what happens inside of an online community when those members know each other. And mm -hmm. to do that, we have to introduce them to each other. So to do that, there's a lot of other things that we could talk about, but that's what the strategy part of it is, is let's talk about what we're all going to do together inside this community, why they're going to be excited to come over mm. and what's going to keep us going because community is not passive. <laughs> it's very active. It's a very, I show up, I'm here, I'm commenting, I'm chatting with you. We're on a zoom where, you know, it's a very event focused communication tool. So if you don't have a way to connect your members directly, intentionally, it's going to get, you're going to, it's going to get harder to get people to share the post. Like somebody said, I just want them to share, share something in the Facebook group. I just want them to like answer the questions. I just want them to do this or that. Great. Well, we can't make them do that, but what would get them interested to do that? It's maybe because they don't know who's in the room. And so a lot of times when we don't know who's in the room, we're not going to speak up, right? If I don't know if there's like a CEO in the room and I'm, you know, you just don't know who's in the room and that, for, for, and what you were saying too early, alludes to earlier, what you're saying about entrepreneurs and don't want to go out on social media and do things that they haven't practiced or rehearsed or yeah, like yeah. they're not great at, we have to start somewhere yeah. and starting the conversation and showing you're, you can look back at my YouTube videos from 2020. Oh, wait. <laughs> there were some doozies in there, but I did it. Yeah. And that's, it's just like getting past that, like worry of doing it to show up for the community members, but for the community members to feel that they're connected to each other. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about so I've been recording, doing podcasts for like almost 17 years, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah, long time. Because I wanted to meet like-minded people that maybe I wouldn't pick up the phone for me in the health yeah. and wellness arena. And I was able to meet people from around the world. Deb. I started the live in 2019, originally for women who are over the age of 35, which is the one you're on right now. And we did it on Instagram because it was the easiest one for them to get on because they felt they weren't heard. Like they mm. felt like they're a certain age, no one was really listening to them. So that's why I started the live version. But let me tell you something. The ones that got the most views weren't the ones that were perfect. Like women, fake eyelashes fell off. You know, their nails were, you know, I'm not kidding. One was a well-known child psychiatrist and she was screaming at her kids in the background. They wanted people. That's because it's relatable. Yeah, they can well, see themselves now. They can be like, oh yeah, that's me. I would totally, you yeah. know, spill that whole glass of milk all over the table. That's yeah. totally a, a thing I could do. I can see that. It's yeah. relatable. Yeah. And that's why I'm not saying you don't want to, you know, get the kinks out. But I always say you got to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. And it's not going to be, you know, all smooth sailing, which I want to get back to what you said your superpower is. I, and I always say the, these words, Deb, ease and flow. So you help people. When you mm. say that, relax with it. You think they get too tense about it, too upset about it, too nervous with it? The technology aspect? Or are you just being like? Oh, in, in general. Because yeah, you, know, you say I but, help them find their calm. Yeah. Entrepreneurs are so overwhelmed because they think they have to, most of the people I work with are in the creator space, they're coaches, speakers, leaders, authors, you know, podcasters, people like that. And they, they're just trying to do a lot of stuff, mostly by themselves in the very beginning, unless you've been in business 10 or 15 or 20 years, you're yeah. probably doing most things by yourself. And maybe if you're lucky to have, to be able to pay a VA, right? Yeah. And Absolutely. It's overwhelming just to think about the tasks, like the back end of like billing and invoicing and like doing all of the idea generation around like, okay, what am I selling? What's my, what's my product? What's the service? What am I doing? That stuff's all really hard. And then on top of that, you're like, oh, and I have to have a thousand followers on YouTube and TikTok and, oh, I've got to do all this. And the truth is you don't have to have any of that to make a business in the beginning. All you need is people who are interested in what you're doing and you being willing to do, willing to talk about what you're doing. 
<laughs> like if it's a service, products yeah. are different, but yeah. uh, just speaking in services right now. And I think that the membership model is complex because we have so many other memberships in our life now, you know, with not just a gym membership, but we've got the Netflix membership. We've got, you know, we've got all these like these things that are recurring payments for us. And so I think now yeah. it's a time for us to be like, okay, well, what's important? Because I can't, my attention is getting pulled into all these directions. So oh. I think that when entrepreneurs are, are thinking about those things, they get really overwhelmed and stressed out. And so part of what I help them with is, okay, we can do all of these things, just not today. We can talk about your 17 different programs, just not today. Which <laughs> one program do you want to talk about today? Because yeah. this is today. <laughs> and that's kind of where we start. <laughs> it's so true. And you're right. I've been an entrepreneur my whole life and I've seen the difference because I owned health clubs and you have a big team. And once you're right, it took me years to get there. It wasn't like I opened the doors and it was like, yeah years and years and years. And then when I sold it and now I'm starting over, I'm fortunate enough. I already have some of the foundations that were already set up for me. So I'm not starting for, and it's still difficult because you're trying to keep up and how much should you pay for technology and other people to help you. And I feel as if though, which is leading me to the next question I got a lot of that feeling of, I didn't post enough. I didn't do enough. Uh, my community's going to forget about me. When can you just say, okay, I've, I'm on enough platforms, you know? Mm -hmm. And some, everyone has a different opinion. Yeah. And then the latest one I heard is like, just pick your two strengths. So that's what they want to know. When is it enough? It goes back to trusting yourself mm -hmm. and making, knowing yourself to say, here's why I excel. Here's the platforms I enjoy. Oh, oh. I now, like do I hang out on all these platforms? No. And sp certainly not all at the same time. I think a lot of people, I work with people, I don't know if you're familiar with Mighty Networks. Are you familiar with that platform at all? No. It's a community platform for entrepreneurs, business owners, coaches who want to start uh, monetizing their life's work with the either courses or um, programs or, you know, memberships. Ooh. And what we talk about inside these communities depends on what the host wants to talk about. So I would set up a community about finding calm, which is what I did in 2020. I launched this to my Facebook followers. I had people join. We recruited people for events. But I focused on that. I was like there and then maybe Facebook was my primary thing. Yep. So I wasn't focusing on like all the things I was doing a podcast, but I decided I didn't want to do a video podcast. So there's decisions that you have to make intentional choices hmm. and then maybe you change. So it's not like a commitment forever. I'm not going to do, I'm committing this month to January. The first month of the year, I usually commit to not doing any social media, like posting of my content. And that's because I'm still trying to figure out okay, I'm like downloading from last year. What do I want to do this year? What's going to get, what's that one thing that if I do that, it'll push other rocks, right? Yeah. And we want to look for that stuff because trying to push 17 boulders up a hill is ridiculous. There's no way. But one boulder with intention, two boulders, three boulders, maybe with intention or support. Okay, we can do that. I also think that people think that they should just be making content constantly. Mm, true, true. And that's not at all how I would enjoy a community. I think we have to think about how you enjoy a community. That's also what I tell clients is, what do you like doing a community? What co online communities are you in that you participate in? Mm. Are you in any? And why are you showing up there? So those are good questions to think about before you even think about content. And a lot of the things that I tell my clients are, you don't really need that much content. You need people in the community and you need the people to trust you as the host yep. so that no like and trust factor has to be there for them to come in the first place. Mm. And then they have to get to know each other in the room. Who's in the room? 
if they don't know any five people in the room, then it's like going to a conference or something. And if you don't know anybody there, are you are you likely to to walk around? I mean, if you're outgoing, maybe you're one of those people that walks around and talks to everybody. But it's going to be really hard for a lot of people to like open up and be like, hey, I'm Deb and I'm from Mechanicsburg. And oh, how how are you today? And all this stuff. It's hard to do that, especially with all the things that we just went through, the pandemic and not even we're like getting used to just being in person again half the time. <laughs> Is this okay? Am I here? Okay. You know, we're doing that whole thing. Yeah. So it really matters on who's in the room. And that's way less important, or that's way more important than the content. The content's way less important than that. Like posting a a photo or a, you know, a graphic that you worked on in Canva. Like those things are great. I love that too. I, I'm a Canva girl all the way. I can spend hours and I have spent hours in Canva. Does that mean that I, those hours equated to money in my bank account? Absolutely not. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I like my theme for 2024. You know, it's always been like abundance in all areas, of my life, but when it comes to the business, instead of just saying abundance, it's like, is it bringing financial reward? Cause that's business. You know, I can do a lot of things. They're my hobbies or my charity work, community work. And I do a lot of that, but to really be laser focused, if it's your work and your business, even if you love it, you should be making money at it. Whatever you feel good about making. I agree. The world doesn't always agree and we don't always find the right pathway. Yeah. Yeah. Or we don't get to the right people in the times that we want. Right. We don't have those relationships built it takes years to build relationships with people yeah it takes a beat deb i can't believe it's already like we went over but who cares and i don't know if i could ever do this again so like once we stop recording <laughs> i'm gonna be like how did i get there and how did i get <laughs> not on that thing that kept saying it over and over again but we'll figure that out but i just want to say i really appreciate you and your calm and I really appreciate you taking the time to do something different and new with me in the new year. But before we go, they need to find out how they can reach you and get your book, man. Yes. So uh, the new book I just wrote, it was published in September. It's called Creator to Community Builder, Find Calm While Building Your Online Community. It is kind of a part memoir slash workbook. I really wanted to make it actionable. So it's very easy to read and actionable. It's like 200 pages, but very easy to read pages. Yeah. Um, most of it's a lot of like questions prompting you. So, you know, it's, it's a very easy read, but what I would say is if you're thinking about this year and doing a, you know, a coaching program, a course, a membership, uh, challenges, any of that kind of stuff, this book is a great tool to help you think strategically about that before you launch. Because 99% oh, yeah. of the people that come to me, come to me at like launch week. Yeah. <laughs> or so, like get this five day, three days yeah. before launch day. And we have done nothing but tell us how to fix everything in, and launch in three days. You know, three to six months is an average launch warm up time that I think is good for warming up an audience to an, a new idea. But at either way, however you do it, get I feel the like book this now. Book, get the book first. Get the book. It's on Amazon. Um, I've got two reviews. I'm looking for more reviews. So uh, if you loved it, uh, please review it as well. Um, but course. findcalmhere.com is my main website. And then the book, just the book, is creator, the number two, creator2communitybuilder.com. So those are the two websites. And you know, I love that. I love it. I've never heard that before about finding calm and building your community. I love that because it's so important. I really want people for me, I want them to enjoy the process. You know, I really don't, mm -hmm. you know, because we are, you're right. So many of us are so overwhelmed and anxious the whole time we're doing it. Yeah. And I was stressed. This is the other thing. I had the same experience in 2020, 2020. And then I ended up bringing these community builders together and then they're like, yeah, Deb, you should do this and get paid for it because it seems like you're really good at this whole community building thing. Yeah. <laughs> because it's beyond just tech stuff, right? It's about people. It is. It is. Yeah. So being somebody that likes 
to talk about people. But anyway, yeah, I have to interview people. I have um, photographs in the book and all that good stuff. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really thrilled that I finished it. Like, it's amazing to have that kind of a project take so long and be so stressful and try to find calm through the whole thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, anything you can do to help others with that, I'm on board. Well, I just have yeah. to say my, hey, I got something to say, people. This was the first. It was a very first. I think I'm going to try it again because I really liked it. And don't worry if people out there are saying, but we didn't know. And and she wasn't on Facebook. When did this happen? Don't worry. I'm going to record it. Thomas is going to put it on all the platforms so we can spread it around, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn. Did I miss something? Probably. Isn't there something called X now? I don't know. <laughs> but we'll be there. And Deb and I would really appreciate it. And you know what I'm going to say? Until next time. Thanks, Deb. And toodles. Bye.